Good afternoon or morning for those of you joining us from Western Australia and welcome to our Careers Day event, Employer Pitch. My name is Andrew Finnegan and I am the Alia Communications Manager. I acknowledge that we're coming to you online from the lands of the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people and I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. So a disclaimer, today's session is a bit of an experiment. We wanted to put together a session that could help guide and inspire current and future library and information professionals on their career paths and really give people a sense of the kinds of jobs that are out there right now. So we have a couple of guest speakers to start, followed by representatives from 10 different employers who will each be given just a few minutes to pitch to you the kinds of opportunities that they have been offering in their organisations and why you might want to consider working for them. It'll be fast and furious, and by the end of the hour, there should be something for everybody to take away. But first, a little housekeeping applies. So, as usual, please keep your speakers on mute unless you are speaking. Feel free to comment in the chat screen, especially if somebody says something that really resonates with you. And if you're on social media and want to share something that you've learned today, then please also use the hashtags LIW2021 for Library and Information Week and LIS Careers. So, our first speaker for today is Jackie Lucas, ALIA's Learning Services Coordinator, who will talk a little bit about how ALIA supports its members' careers. So over to you, Jackie. Thank you, Andrew. And great to see that we've got over 100 people with us today already. So that's great. If you could keep put sending, admitting people through the waiting room, that would be great. So hello, everyone. Uh, yes, as Andrew said, he's asked me to speak about how ALIA supports its members' careers. And as the National Professional Association for Library and Information Professionals, it's core to our role to foster the interests and aspirations of our members across all career stages. And so today I'm going to briefly outline some of the broad ways that ALIA supports our members in their careers and also some of the specific programs that we run that can support you. So one of the main ways that ALIA can help you is by supporting you to stay up to date. And we do this uh, by producing a number of e-newsletters. There's ALIA Weekly that comes out uh, every Wednesday and it's always full of the, the latest news and going on in the library and information sector. And then once a month on the first Thursday of each month, we send out PD postings to our members. Now, this newsletter is always chock a block full of professional development suggestions and ideas, all of the latest goings on. There's webinars for you to see, there's websites to visit, podcasts to listen to. And this is a great resource for, for staying current. It's, it's full of information, so you can pick and choose what you want to take out of that. And we also have Recruit LIS. Uh, this comes out once a week and it has all the latest job vacancies in it. So if you're job seeking, one thing I'd really recommend is you look through this and see, look at the selection criteria and what are people looking for? And this can help shape your professional development. And of course, there's Insight Magazine, which comes out six times a year, every two months. And each issue has a theme that explores relevant LIS issues. And the issue coming up uh, has the theme of I believe, uh, which is one to look out for. And you can also write for insight as well, um, as it's a window into the day-to-day -day happenings in libraries. And writing for insight is a great way to get your name out there in a publication. We're also available to our members for support and advice. Um, if you do need career advice, you can email us and we do our very best to, to help you um, either in-house or by uh, getting you in touch with one of our state managers because sometimes um, career advice needs are geographically related and so we have state managers that can help you. We can also provide you with professional development advice 
And um, through our advocacy work, ALIA supports mutual recognition of qualifications. So we have mutual recognition agreements with North America, USA and Canada, with the UK, with Ireland, and also with New Zealand as well. And the third way we can support our members' career is, next little animation, please, Andrew is to help you develop your networks and be recognised. So ALIA has numerous groups. Some of them are national and some of them are geographically located. And this, this is, is about my... Uh, this is a great way for you to, um, to meet up with people, like-minded people. We have things uh, like ALIA, um, ALIA graphic for people working in libraries that are interested in graphic novels and comics. Um, and we even have here in the ACT, we have a, an ALIA retirees group. So we support people across all career stages with the ALIA groups. And there's really something for everyone um, to be interested in there. Uh, if you're not in feeling a little bit shy to begin with, you can just sign up to the e-list and be a lurker on hashtag OzLibChat, which happens on the first Tuesday of every month. Uh, it's a wonderful way to get connected and to see who's who out there. Uh, it's run by the ALIA New Generation Advisory Committee and they're on Twitter every um, Tuesday night on the first Tuesday of the month. And ALIA also has numerous advisory committees that, sorts, that supports the ALIA board in their decision making. And that is also definitely a way where you can play a part in providing input uh, to strategic directions. Wonderful way to get involved and make a difference. Now, um, into the program, specific programs that ALIA runs to support the careers of its members, uh, probably our flagship program is the ALIA PD scheme. I really hope you've already heard about the PD scheme. Uh, every new or renewing ALIA member is now automatically enrolled into the PD scheme. And, um, it's a way to have your efforts in professional development recognised and to, that can help you in your career, whether it's job seeking or whether you're in a position and looking to move sectors. The PD, scape, uh, the PD scheme provides you with a framework where you log and reflect on your ongoing professional development. And this all counts towards PD hours um, that can provide you with recognition, including post nominals, or a certified professional certificate, or after five years, distinguished certified professional certificates. And it, it provides proof to your employers of your commitment to ongoing learning. And it also allows you to maintain a clear and accessible record of your learning. Uh, and the PD scheme also offers a number of specialisations. We actually have 10 at the moment. And you don't have to be working in the field to engage in a specialisation. It might be an area you're interested in and interested in developing your skills. And you don't even have to be enrolled in the PD scheme to access those materials as an ALIA member. We have skills audits and all kinds of resources that, that match those, those specialisations. For our general members and student members who don't have their qualifications, uh, yet we offer the ALIA Proficiency Recognition Program uh, and it is also geared towards supporting you to get used to logging and reflecting on your learning but providing clear evidence to potential employers that you have a commitment to your learning and a genuine interest in the library and information sector. Any questions you might have about the PD scheme or the PRP, uh, you can email me at pd at alia.org.au and I'd only be too happy to, to tell you more about it. Um, also in our members area, we have the ALIA Career Development Kit. Uh, it's free to all ALIA personal and institutional members, and it's designed to help you analyze your professional development needs and to reflect on, on your definition of personal success. So if you're in a job, the Career Development Kit can be really useful in helping you prepare for a performance review. Uh, and it's also useful for identifying opportunities for growth generally in your personal and professional life. We also have the ALIA mentoring scheme. The new intake for 2021 is open up now today. So you can go to our website and see the applications there now. The ALIA mentoring scheme matches up experienced professionals with up and coming LAS professionals for the benefit of all involved. And so, if 
you are looking for someone uh, that you can speak to about your career direction, someone to provide you with guidance, the Alia Mentoring Scheme is a wonderful way to go. We do all the matching for you and also support you throughout the 12 months of the program. Uh, we have monthly webinars, supporting materials and an online learning platform to support that. And finally, I hope I went fast enough for you there, Andrew. Finally, I'd like to give a nod to Alia Training. Uh, Alia Training is always monitoring where there are training needs in the sector and, and are developing courses to meet those needs. Most of the courses are self-paced and online, and they're a great way to refresh and update your skills and knowledge, or to learn something new to broaden your professional scope. So Alia training is open to all of our members at quite a significantly reduced rate. So there you have it, a snapshot of how Alia supports its members in their careers. Thanks everyone. So thank you, um, Jackie. And our next speakers come to us from Ignite Recruitment Agency, um, Catherine and Gemma, who will talk a little about what they do and the opportunities that can come through a recruitment agency. So over to you. Thanks, Andrew. And thanks for the opportunity. Um, I'm Catherine Hill. I'm from Ignite. Um, some of you may have heard of us as the One Umbrella from many years ago. So we've been recruiting in this area for a long time. Uh, prior to being the One Umbrella, we were known as Library Locums and we purely did library roles. Now, of course, we've got a much broader uh, scope in terms of the roles that we look at. So it's probably across the information management spectrum generally. Um, so we provide opportunities to People coming from an information management background, whether they're qualified or getting qualified or hoping to be qualified. So the roles we have range from, at the moment, I've got student shelving roles available through to the most senior role is head of library. So, and anything in between. Um, mainly though, we will be looking at contract work. Um, some of the more senior roles will be permanent roles, but generally the opportunities for people entering the industry are through contract work. Um, and it can be across all types of libraries. Um, the majority, I would say at the moment, are probably government libraries. So whether it's local government, state government, federal government, um, and they are being government generally contract roles. So. Um, the benefit of contract work, it gives you the opportunity to try different environments, to try different um, areas that you might be interested in working with. And um, yeah, so and building up your resume that way, and it often helps get that next job. So um, we do see quite a strong pattern of people starting off doing fairly low level contract work and gradually moving up the ladder. And then if we're lucky and um, they're still with us when the time comes, we are able to find them a permanent role as well. So there is quite a strong pattern. To register with us, um, it's probably best to go through our website. And I think the web address is on that slide there, is it, Andrew? Um, and um, there you can register with us through the website there. And then either Gemma or I will get back to you. Doesn't look like the web address is there. Um, I'll put that through in a, um, a message later. Catherine, we can share that with our registrants after the session. Fantastic. Um, so you, you won't see that we're advertising a lot of roles at the moment. We're tending to go to our database in the first instance for roles that come in for a number of reasons. And one being is that we need to react quickly for contract work. Generally, we need to get resumes over to an employer fairly quickly. Um, so we're going to people who are registered with us already. Um, so you won't see us advertising roles out on Seek or any of the other job boards very often. We like to have something advertised most of the time. Um, and you, you can always apply through those job ads as well directly to us. Um, um, and I think often Gemma or I will say at the end of the ad, please apply anyway, even if this isn't the right job for you, we'd like to hear from you anyway. So um, do keep an eye on those. Um, they will be on our website as well. Um, but yeah, so look, in terms of the types of roles, anything from shelving, library assistant, library technician, librarian, 
library manager, and then everything else that sort of might be information management related. So the sort of job titles we get vary quite a lot. I've been seeing quite a lot of knowledge management roles lately. They're not always purely knowledge management. Sometimes they're more of a um, research roles or a managing content, internet content, that sort of thing. Um, quite often we have information management in the job title or information just generally. Digital is a big focus at the moment. So we're getting um, things with um, digital in the type, job title as well. So in terms of searching for job titles, it's hard. It makes it harder now that there's a much more broader spectrum in terms of what do you look for? How do you set your search up if you're searching in SEEK? Um, I wouldn't search just purely on the SEEK categories. I think you need to search more broadly than that. Um, yeah, so look, um, I'd say if if you're thinking of um, having a, a more in-depth discussion about what the career opportunities are that we could offer, I would suggest contacting us directly and then we can talk to you about the actual roles that we've got at the moment. Um, we've got quite a few um, at the moment, ranging from archives officer and records officers and more records type focused work. Um, to a, a digital library specialist, um, a, um, this one is a um, technical services role, which is really probably more of a cataloging role. Um, and yeah, look, so we'll see that there are quite, there is quite a range of different skills that we require as well. There's another one, metadata specialist. So that's probably calling more on the, the cataloging type skills. Um, so in terms of where the focus is for where we're seeing the, the, the skills that we need, the less traditional library roles are probably the areas that people come to us for because they're harder to find candidates for. Um, so yeah, so when, when it's more of a traditional role, uh, employers tend to advertise those themselves. So you might find that we've got some more, I suppose, quirky type roles that might come through. So that's where we can help if you're looking for something a little bit different. So I might hand over to Gemma to give you a bit more of an idea of um, um, other ways that we can help with you finding your next job. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks so much for having me today. Um, so I thought it would be a good idea to sort of just give a few more tips. I know that Jackie and Catherine have both given um, some pretty good ideas already, um, but some other tips to sort of get you started with um, the job hunt in information management or libraries specifically, um, because it is a competitive market and it is really important to stand out. So um, one of the most important things or probably the most important thing uh, is to make sure that your resume is, uh, it's your first impression to organisations. So ensure that uh, that includes the most important things on the first page, because really you've only got maybe 10 or 20 seconds maximum to capture uh, someone's attention. So uh, making sure that your education is listed first and your experience is listed in reverse chronological order are both really important things. Um, to be honest, if you were to talk to 10 different people, you would get 10 different ideas on how a resume should look. So it's really important that your resume looks a way in a way that you're comfortable with. Um, but at the same time, it has to include all the important things. So things like a photo, you could have a photo on, on your resume if you would like to, um, but it's not absolutely necessary. Um, that leads me into LinkedIn profiles. Um, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, I would really recommend you get one. They're super important. Um, aside from you being able to use LinkedIn to look on different organisations uh, pages to see what positions they've got available, uh, like cultural institutions, for example, use LinkedIn quite a lot to advertise their vacancies. Um, LinkedIn is also a great way for organisations to approach you um, with regards to positions that they're trying to fill. So uh, it's super important that your LinkedIn profile matches your resume. Um, it, that seems like a, a really obvious thing, but quite often people will leave things out of their LinkedIn profile, like positions they've had that are listed in their resume and it gets picked up by future employers. So um, they do check. Um, another important thing is to make sure you've got a professional um, photo. Something that looks like you, not something that was taken 15, 20 years ago. That's really, really vital as well. Um, the last thing I wanted to touch on, which Jackie has already mentioned is 
around networking. It cannot be underestimated. Um, it is so important. Just uh, like even things like today, um, being able to find out more information about the industry and being able to connect with people that are like-minded and are in the industry and could potentially connect you with your next employer. Um, that's, that's really important as well. So make sure, I mean, Google searches and so on, you'll be able to find events coming up, make you staying connected with Alia is obviously really important, but yeah, that's, that's, that's a really good, a couple of really good points to be able to get you, get you started. Excellent. Thank you so much, um, Catherine and Gemma. So next up, we were hoping to have the National Library, but I think they may not actually be here. If you're from the National Library, Shirley, are you there? Can you yes, shout I'm out? I'm here. I'm here. Can oh, you hear? Sorry, uh, it wasn't. Yeah, okay. Well, over to you, Shirley. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, thanks for having us, Andrew. It's a great opportunity to um, have a, an audience with a, a group of um, people around the world almost. So uh, a couple of uh, things we'd like to um, share with you. Firstly, the library, obviously, the National Library is a wonderful place to work. Great location. You're in an iconic building here looking over the lake and uh, what a beautiful um, place to be and be reminded of what a great opportunity um, the library presents to all of Australia and around the world. So, uh, Andrew, I might just get you to click onto the next slide for me, please. There we go. So, um, just would like to share with you that the library has been through a major reorg um, in recent times, and we're just at the end of that. And that restructure has resulted in uh, a number of new roles being um, advertised. And at the moment, we're actually advertising and um, going through a process for some APS6 roles. Some of those are generic type roles, program manager, uh, and um, project type roles, as well as we do have specialised roles that are here at the library. One of the roles that um, we have had some difficulty filling, um, following on from what you were saying, Catherine, in the digital type space is an enterprise architect at an EL2 level. So we have a major range of positions that go from uh, highly level digitised roles, and you'd be aware that we house Trove as well, so that's a big component and digitalising all of that right through to staff who actually look after our reading room uh, as well as our bookshop. So a great range of opportunities that we have here. We expect that the library will have some further positions available in the upcoming future. Uh, part of the reorg, as well as looking at uh, what we're doing moving forward, we're in the process of just developing a workforce strategy as well in line with the recent reorg that we've had. Uh, we advertise through a number of platforms, which includes places like LinkedIn, APS, Gazette, and also through Alia. And if there are specialised roles where we might have identified measures, uh, also looking at Indigenous opportunities as well and through those avenues. Uh, we use a recruitment model that's based on business and leadership functions, and as well as then the technical requirements. Also noting that following COVID, uh, looking at opportunities to be a flexible working uh, arrangement and we provide flexibility here at the library where possible in line with operational requirements. So one of the focuses obviously is a high level of communication skills now when we're working remotely as well. Uh, as mentioned there, we look for digital capability, professional practice, uh, commercial acumen and relationship and influencing skills. And I'll leave it there. Thanks, Andrew. Excellent, thank you. So the next four employers come to us from the Australian public library sector. So first up, the first pitch from the public libraries comes to us from the city of Mooney Valley with Celia Rice. Uh, thanks, Andrew, for that. Um, so yeah, I'm the senior coordinator at Mooney Valley uh, Libraries. And I guess um, all public libraries are really looking for people who are community minded, they value equity and access, and people who are able to be flexible and adaptive and are really people people. Um, for this particular role, we're looking for a degree level qualification. It's a team leader role and it's our biggest branch. So we're looking for people with extremely strong leadership skills. Uh, it's a 35 hour a week, so we do expect um, our team leaders to work weekends, um, one in three in this situation, and uh, evenings as well. 
Um, so just so you have an idea of it, you know, we have um, almost 26,000 members at that particular branch, the Sam Merrifield branch in Mooney Ponds, which this team leader will be looking after. Uh, we have over 200,000 um, visitors in a general year, over 300,000 loans. So it's really, really busy branch. There's 13 staff that are, would report to this team leader. Um, and so the role is kind of brought up, um, broken up into three sort of sections. So there's a leadership planning and policy um, aspect of it. So obviously our team leaders um, inform our policies. Um, they know the branches best uh, then they know what's needed on the floor. So they have been put into policy um, and the strategic uh, direction for the service. Um, but mostly, most of the role is around branch management. So that's making sure that the do doors are opened every day, that customers are being looked after, that rosters are correct, that people are showing up and doing the job that we need them to do. And making sure our environments are really welcoming because that's key for public libraries to make sure everyone feels welcome. Um, and also an aspect of this role is portfolio management. So for this particular role, the portfolio is outreach. Um, at Mini Valley, we're very keen to extend our library services outside our library walls. We have five branches, but obviously not every neighbourhood has their own branch. So this role is about operationalising some of those strategic decisions that we've made and making sure that we provide a really great outreach service. Um, it's also around partnerships, um, public libraries, um, we, you know, we have, everyone has a finite amount of money, the more partnerships we can make, the more um, programs we can deliver, the better service we can offer. So we're looking for somebody who has that skill um, and obviously really great communication skills. Um, so Mini Valley is a very diverse municipality. Um, we have a mix of social housing and very privileged people. So it's a really interesting um, area to work in. And I guess um, one tip I'd give more generally about working in public libraries in Victoria, a lot of um, positions are advertised through SEEK, but they're also advertised through um, the Public Libraries uh, Victoria network, the mailing list. So if you are looking for a library job in Victoria in public libraries, make sure you get yourself on that mailing list because that's where a lot of the jobs are. Thank you, Celia. All right. Next. We head to head, head up north to Mackay Regional Council with Nicole Hunt. Hi, Andrew. Uh, thanks for having us uh, today. Um, so, for those of you who don't know where Mackay is situated, we are about 970 kilometres north of Brisbane, about 740 kilometres south of Cairns. So, we're not quite in the middle, but we're close. We are on the cusp of the doorway to the Great Barrier Reef. Um, Airlie Beach is just up the road. Um, so whilst some of you might be having quite a chilly day there today, our sun is shining and it is a beautiful balmy 25 degrees here. Uh, I think we got down to a, a minimum over the weekend, um, which scared some people, it was about seven degrees. So they bring out their jumpers once or twice a year here. So the weather is completely appealing. We've got a population of around 118,000 people at the moment and have just recently celebrated hitting 40% of the community as library members, which is um, a pretty big achievement. That's growth of about 36% uh, over the last two years. So we've worked quite hard to do that. The position that we have uh, available at the moment is a branch supervisor for one of our outlying locations. So this is the Morani Library. Currently, this is a 24 hour a week role. It does involve weekends, um, supervising the branch. But what is very exciting and a meeting I've just come to prior to this was the um, planning and detailed design with the architects for um, how the Morani Central Precinct is going to be redeveloped. So this is, um, I guess, Celia is looking for someone quite experienced. We're looking for someone who's going to come in at that entry level and sort of earn their stripes and develop that leadership and develop the experience that you need to go on to um, manage a bigger branch at a later date. Um, pretty excited about this one in that you get the opportunity to sort of be on the ground as a, a new library building um, is established and get to have your sort of say and a great community consultation, the experience with the architects and fitting that out. So your daily commute around here, depending on where you live, might be anywhere from five minutes to 40 minutes. So we have a 40 minute drive between our two locations. Uh, nowhere near as much traffic as what you have in the big cities. We struggle uh, at times to get good qualified candidates in a regional area. And whilst this position is only 24 hours at this stage, 
once that precinct is redesigned and redeveloped, there's potential for the hours to increase in that role. So five static branches with uh, one large truck mobile library, which is soon to become a smaller truck and a van so that we can reach some of our more outlying areas. Uh, Morani, where the location of the branch is, is going through quite a lot of transformation. It's the gateway to the Yungala Valley. Um, and we've got some amazing things happening in that space with councillors as well with the mountain bike trails. So we're expecting that precinct to see a lot of visitations as all of these tourist elements increase. So we're after someone that's keen, motivated, wants to be part of the community, wants to perhaps, you know, learn and develop their skills and is prepared to move outside of a larger city centre to do so. We still have planes. We still fly to wherever you want to go. Um, so there is the ability to sort of get out and about. Um, but it's a really great opportunity. I've been up here for close to 15 years now, so I'm not going to head off anywhere anytime soon. So if you're looking for a sea change or a tree change, we've got all of those here. Um, come on down to Mackay. Thanks, Nicole. Um, certainly sounds like an exciting opportunity and much warmer than it is here in Canberra. I'm quite sure. So next, we are headed to the Red Centre and uh, we've got Felicity Waldock from Alice Springs Town Council. Hi, can you hear me? Um, so my name is Felicity. I'm the acting manager of the Alice Springs Public Library. Um, I would like to just point out that Alice Springs is still cold. So for, if you're used to um, the cold weather, it, there's not too much of an adjustment. But the Alice Springs Public Library is one of the few um, libraries, I think, that almost all the jobs are permanent um, positions, uh, whether they're full-time or part-time, they are still permanent roles. Um, and this really attractive, like you can get up to four, uh, five weeks of annual leave, there's um, personal leave, all the fun things that you can get. The Alice Springs Public Library is the only public library in Alice Springs and the next public library um, is Tennant Creek, so it's 500 kilometres north of us. Um, we cater to the Alice Springs community, um, but we also cater to remote communities um, in Central Australia, so that could be south of the border, west or east and further north. Um, it's hugely steeped in Aboriginal culture. So if that's something that you're interested, it is very strong. Um, and the Alice Springs community works with the Alice Springs Public Library to um, share and help share that uh, local culture. The current job that we have running at the moment is the uh, programs coordinator. It is part of the library management team. This person is to, responsible to um, work with the town council and um, the community in delivering um, lifelong learning um, and other uh, promoting library services to the wider community, whether that's within the library itself or out in outreach. So it is um, a full time role and it is permanent. Um, it's we're looking for somebody who is about the people. Um, I believe Celia said it right, that um, public libraries are a place where people, we connect. Um, uh, and that's that's something that we're really looking forward to um, gaining. Um, if you wanna know more, you can always call me um, at the library and I can talk further into it. Um, just follow the website, Battle Springs Town Council website. We'll have more um, positions coming up um, throughout the year, um, but yeah. That's it, thanks. Thank you, Felicity. Back to the big smoke in Sydney. Um, we've got Fairfield City, and um, I'd like to um, welcome Manjit to talk about the role at Fairfield. Thank you, Andrew, and welcome, everybody. Um, Fairfield City, for those of you that, that aren't aware, we're located um, in Sydney's southwestern uh, suburbs, about 32 kilometres from the Sydney CBD. Um, we're bounded by uh, Blacktown Council on one boundary, Cumberland Council in the north, 
um, City of Canterbury, Bankstown in the east, and Liverpool City in the south, and Penrith City in the west. So we're in the middle of all of those councils. Um, currently, we are advertising for a, um, it's a full-time position for a innovative programs officer. And it's a grade four position and applications close on the 30th of May. The position, we here at Fairfield City Open Libraries, um, we have quite a few digital creative spaces. Um, one of which is Studio 2166, whereby um, in that space, we have an audio suite where people can actually come in and record music. Um, they can, we have editing software in there. Um, and there is also a green screen facility whereby people can come in and do podcasting. They can also um, film um, short YouTube, videos that they can then subsequently upload onto YouTube. We provide all the equipment. We have the cameras, we have the video cameras. We also, um, prior to COVID and we're slowly getting back to it, um, we also offer workshops to support um, the users of that space um, in case they don't have all the skills to be able to operate those functions themselves. So, um, that space, as well as we have um, a lab, well, we have two labs um, situated at two different branches um, that have innovative technology in them. We have Neo robots. Um, we have um, virtual reality as well. Um, so within the labs, we actually offer STEAM programs. So we're looking for somebody who's innovative, has maybe an educational background as well, that can teach people how to use some of the equipment that we've got in those spaces, um, particularly um, in the region of the STEAM program. So we're actually um, socially disadvantaged, the, the community that we have here. Um, so a lot of our community do not have access to these resources themselves. That's why um, we're hoping by providing them in the library, it's giving them equitable access to something that otherwise they, they would not have access to. So um, if you're actually somebody who's kind of out there and loves playing with gadgetry and creating and developing new programs to um, encourage the use of STEAM, that's the sort of pro person that we're actually looking for. Um, so it's not your traditional role. Um, and it's also a lot of fun because you do get to actually um, explore new gadgetry that's out there. Um, and then, you know, if it's something that can actually fit into um, an educational program, um, then it's something that we can actually purchase and then start delivering to the community. Um, we've also got 3D printers, so that's something as well, again, where people are showing an interest, but then, you know, they are costly items to purchase, and we want people that to come and explore and actually be able to go away with actually knowing how to use this sort of equipment, and then having the opportunity to come in and use it by themselves. So, um, the position is being advertised on our website. It's also on SEEK. Um, if you have any further questions about it, because it's still open for applications up until the 30th of May, please feel free to contact me um, and, and do take a look at, at um, the position if, if it's something that, that appeals to you. Um, the actual qualifications, um, we're asking for an advanced certificate or diploma in library and information and cultural services or in the from the educational educational field um, if you or if you've got videography or other related IT disciplines. So it's covering quite a, a gamut of, of areas. So please don't be put off by the fact that you, you feel that you may not have everything because we're, we're not going to find a person that encompasses all of that. Um, but 
hey, have a look at it. And if it's something that, that you feel that you would like to um, put your hand up for, please give it a go. Thank you. Thank you, Manjit. So we've seen four very interesting, unique uh, opportunities in the public library sector. Our next five employer pitches will come to us from the university library sector. So firstly, we have Claire Thorpe from the University of South Queensland. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so I come from University of Southern Queensland. We have three campuses in the southeast corner of Queensland, two about half an hour west of Brisbane, and the other one at Toowoomba, which is about an hour and a half drive west of Brisbane. So we do our class as a regional university uh, because we are based outside the metropolitan areas and regional universities are fantastic places to work if you're looking for a tree change or a sea change, depending on where they're based. So our university is particularly um, a leader in the library space in open textbooks and open education. We have really great strong professional development offerings and opportunities for you to collaborate both within the library and beyond. Academic libraries in general are great to find your specialisation in librarianship or information work. They offer lots of diverse different types of roles and the like. So if you can move to a regional university, you're going to get great experience, great development opportunities and the opportunity to work in a whole range of different roles that you might not necessarily get in the metropolitan areas. The other thing I'll mention is that we recruit for potential. Uh, we also recruit for cultural fit. So look at the organisation or the library that you're applying for and check out their values. If they have a value statement that aligns with your personal and professional values, that's a really great thing to tap into when you're applying and interviewing. Um, the other thing I'll mention is regional universities often attract smaller pools of applicants, so you've got a better chance of actually getting past the application hurdles. So do give it a shot if and consider it moving to um, a regional university. So the job that Andrew asked me to speak to today, apologies, it did close yesterday, so it's not currently open, but it is a unique opportunity. And that's the role of coordinator evidence-based practice. So you'll see these types of roles in academic libraries. Sometimes they're called assessment librarians overseas. Um, sometimes here they're, they're quality and planning type roles. Our role is particularly named to reflect the evidence-based practice part of librarianship, which is one of the things that defines us as a profession. So this role is about coordinating USQ libraries data collection, performance measurement and reporting. So if you're really passionate about working with data, usability, user experience, um, compliance, reporting and communicating evidence with influence, this is something that you might like to consider developing your skills in for the future. So what I'm looking for when people apply for this job is a really good understanding of the business of a library, particularly the business of a library in an academic institution. So what is it that the library does and how do we show that to the rest of the university? I'm looking for someone who's creative and curious, who's open to experimenting with new approaches to gathering evidence, working with students, working with staff, collecting data in unique and creative ways, analysing that and then communicating it back to our stakeholders. So I'm looking for good negotiation skills, good communication skills and management skills. I'm looking for people who are interested in upskilling in things like data visualisation and also people who are interested in using evidence to be influential. So if you're interested in those sorts of things, this is the sort of job that you might want to keep an eye out for. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Claire. Now, moving from one regional university to another, we have Sarah Jansen from the University of Newcastle. Thanks very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, fabulous. Okay, uh, and I have to thank Claire for selling all the benefits of working at a regional university. You've done half my job for me, thank you. Look, it's um, it's rewarding in general to work in a library in the tertiary sector because um, you end up you know, supporting both the research and teaching needs of the institution, but really having an input into the student experience. So speaking for my own institution, the University of Newcastle, 
It's a very reputable and stable regional university. Um, we do punch above our weight in research rankings, which is uh, kudos, obviously, to our researchers. But also it's partially because as a regional institution, we are extremely well connected with and supported by our surrounding community. And our uni is uh, very much about enabling our regions to access high quality ter tertiary education. So we have one of the highest um, annual intakes of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students in our courses. Um, we've got lots of first and family students and we cater really well uh, for those students with a range of different pathways programs. So over 2019, our library actually um, developed a very new, very clear and future focused vision and strategy. And we did undergo a little bit of organisational change in order to help us achieve that strategy. Um, now that we've settled, we've settled really well into our new structure and um, we've got very connected leadership team. Um, and our workplace is incredibly positive and collaborative, which speaks volumes for all that consultation that we did back then and how well our staff have really welcomed these new ways of working. Um, something that stands out about our library particularly is our strong focus on student engagement. So, you know, we, we not only provide a range of information and digital literacy programs to complement or embed into the curriculum, but we actually have um, also a team that are dedicated to generating many other co-curricular programs that bring students together and help them connect with one another. So things like our maker spaces, um, we do winter warmers, free hot soups, um, you know, in an inviting space, speed meet and greets to help students connect. Um, and we have a create festival every year that actually brings students into the library to, to take some of our less wanted books and turn them into incredible artworks. Um, we're also really good providers of student employment here. And um, we've got a strong user experience program to make sure that our student voices actually inform what we do with the library. Um, so we've got a number of great jobs coming out in the next little while. And they'll be advertised on SEEK and through ALIA. So we've got a few Q4 library officer roles, and these are a really great entry point into careers within university libraries. Um, they're generalist roles, uh, predominantly client facing, and they've got a focus on the student experience. Um, career advancement from those roles can happen into any area of our library generally. Um, we've got Hugh Six teaching and um, teaching liaison librarian role. Uh, it's focused on the area of health and medical sciences. Uh, so this particular role is to develop embedded information and digital literacy programs uh, to enable student success. You know, working at that interface with ac academics and students. We've got a Hugh Six special collections librarian role. Um, so building and caring for our rare and unique collections, both physical and digital, making them accessible. Uh, and so with that comes uh, research services for people seeking to access those things. And we've got a Hugh Six acquisitions librarian, um, quite a different role, working with a range of library teams to allocate our scholarly resources budget across subscriptions and one-time purchases, just making sure we can accommodate course readings as well and that we have a digital first approach when acquiring new content. And finally, we've got a Hugh 7, so quite a senior role, content coordinator role. And this role actually will coordinate branch wide, um, continuous reviews of all of our resources, physical and electronic, looking at statistics, at our subscriptions, our licensing agreements, making sure we've just got the best fit for purpose content with really strong alignment to um, courses and research. So that's it from me. And thank you for your time. And I'm very happy to respond to questions through the chat. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. It sounds like lots of wonderful opportunities at hey. Newcastle coming up to look out for. Next, back down to uh, back down to Victoria. We are joined by Claire Carlson from Deakin University. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Right. Um, well, I sort of have taken a slightly different approach. I was thinking about libraries in general and how kind they've been to me throughout my career. Um, I've worked in public libraries, I've worked in specials in the fields of medicine, banking, architecture and disability. And each of those have their own rewarding aspect to it. And, um, but I've been in um, universities now for over 20 years. I'm not gonna quite admit how many over the 20, um, but uh, they're, they're so rewarding. So universities provide that incredible experience of seeing students really achieve their outcomes and their goals and the vibrancy and the energy that you get every year from a new intake of um, students is, is just, it's renewing for you personally in your life, but it's just wonderful to see them go from school kids to um, mature adults in their in their growth of their career. So that's um, pretty well why. And why Deacon? 
Um, well, uh, we're based uh, in um, Victoria, as you know, uh, most probably. We have campuses in Burwood, two in Geelong, and one down in beautiful Warrnambool, the wild friendly birthing area of um, Australia. So um, it's a, a pretty incredible place to work. We're friendly, we're ambitious, but we're also very inclusive as a university and as a library, we take those things on um, uh, to our heart. As Sarah said, uh, and I agree with her, we are so student facing, it's um, incredible, the engagement that we have with our students and we feel quite passionate about that. We're known for digital innovation and um, that this is our real strength. And that strength then flows into the programs that we offer our staff and where you can be um, at that time. So the, um, uh, we're, even though over 2020, we really flourished. Uh, we were, we, yes, the doors might've been closed for a while, but really our physical spaces uh, uh, were only the part of us that were closed. All of our uh, services remain vibrant and strong, and it's allowed us to develop a whole lot of different programs, which is quite wonderful. So universities are unique in the fact that they offer 17% super, uh, which is a real win when you uh, consider that most of Australia is on about nine. Uh, we have generous leave and we've got a very, very flexible working environment. Um, and unless you're a casual, there's no weekends and very few uh, staff have to work evening shifts either. So that can be a real win if you're trying to balance family and other interests and things in your life, you can do that quite well. We have so many different sorts of roles uh, that we have as part of our work, um, user experience, communications, special collections. We've got a whole digital team to explore that um, sort of area. And we vary from casual to part-time to full-time um, ongoing raise. That there's real scope in the work that we do uh, to pivot to other areas and positions and to try out new roles um, if that's uh, what, what you want to do. We allow you to actually experiment when somebody's away or when, and on maternity leave and go and try a different role uh, for yourself. We, as I said before, we invest heavily in professional development um, and that's in-house, it's very strong and also um, connecting to Caval and Alia are key for us. Um, we work closely with faculty and we show um, and uh, the impact of the work that we do. We've got a couple of roles that are out at the moment, always advertise on Alia, it's one of our main, um, uh, as well as Seek, uh, but on the uh, university website as well. Uh, electronic um, readings coordinated is out, it's a youth seven role. There's one coming out hot off the press, uh, library services coordinator, Hugh Six. Uh, and the sorts of people uh, we're looking for have been summed up beautifully by the other speakers. Somebody who's willing to learn, good with people, good with students, um, really engaged in that space. So I can't recommend universities highly enough and Deakin um, is at the top of them. There you go, thank you. Thank you, Claire. Now, to the University of New England, we have Anna Deshane. And I'll unmute myself. Thank you, Andrew. Um, it's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me to come and talk to everybody. Um, so um, I'm representing the University of New England and my position is I'm the manager of library academic services and outreach. And um, UNE is uh, Australia's first university that was established outside a capital city. And as such, we've developed a reputation for developing and providing quality teaching and research. Across, across a wide range of disciplines. And we're really committed to building on that reputation. Um, UNE Library is currently recruiting a client services librarian, and the position will provide services for researchers, teachers, and students at UNE. Uh, the client services librarian is part of the team that I manage, and um, we're a really close team that work really collaboratively. Um, the, the, successful candidate will be advising the staff and students across the university in a number of different modes. So we are um, an online university uh, as well as a face-to-face -face university. And of course, following last year's experiment, we've really strengthened those um, online skills. 
So the librarian team are currently leading programs across the university in digital dexterity and open scholarship, uh, the renewal of the curriculum and academic promotions. So the role will be a diverse one. And so that's, it's really exciting because it is an opportunity to learn all of those different areas of um, research and teaching and learning. So the kind of candidate who will be successful in this role, um, I'm really looking for someone who's curious, someone who, provide, um, who prides themselves on professional presentation and someone who is an excellent communicator. And again, I think everyone's spoken about this skill of communication, and I believe it really sits at the core of what an excellent librarian, particularly someone who is at this level of um, librarian, um, it's really at the heart of the role. Um, because the position represents the library, the, the client services librarian or liaison librarian is often the voice of the library services. So you'll be out there promoting and engaging in the provision of services to different people with different needs. So you need to be able to pitch your communication to people who are researchers, people who are teaching, and then an array of different students from um, people in preparatory programs to people who are studying, um, writing their PhD thesis. So that communication skill, I, I think is really at the heart of this role. So let's, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about Armadale, which is this incredibly beautiful town where UNE is based. And I've put a slide on the back here of my, um, my Zoom screen so you can see what it looks like right now. It's this very beautiful um, red uh, sea of leaves and trees. It's really a stunning place. Um, there's a really close connection between the town and the academic community, and we call it the town and gown. So we are embedded um, each within each other. The uh, academic community supports town and town supports the academic community. Um, UNE also has a strong relationship with the whole of the New England tablelands. So that includes a campus in Tamworth, and we have um, support spaces in Moree, in Narrabri, Ganada, and we also have a growing campus in Sydney. And really, I, I just have to remind everybody of the beauty of the New England region. If you've never been here, come for a visit. It's absolutely stunning right now. It's freezing cold. I believe it was minus six overnight. So it's the altitude that gives us our sort of get up and go <laughs> because you really need to um, enjoy a cold morning and a cosy warm evening by a fireplace, which I'm learning to love. Um, uh, we're surrounded by stunning national parks and waterfalls. And so it's bushwalkers haven, as well as if you have any horse blood in you or you know anyone who loves horses, this is the town for you. Uh, and, and finally, there's also the Moree Hot Springs, which is just up the road, and it's another delight in wintertime. So, yeah, I encourage you all to um, take a look at the Alia um, ad that we've placed for the position, and um, please reach out to me uh, if you have any questions. And good luck, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Now, finally, our final speaker for the session is Julie Gardner, down in Melbourne at Victoria University. Hi, uh, thanks, uh, Andrew. Welcome, everyone. I'm uh, conscious of the time, so I'll uh, make this short and sharp. So Victoria University is currently recruiting for a digital services officer, and this is our full time and permanent position. And as you know, most library services these days um, are in, yeah, and resources are in a digital uh, format. And there's a range of systems and processes that go on behind the scenes to make sure that our students uh, and our, our clients can sort of access the range of things we offer. And so this particular role is one of those that um, supports the library in electronic information services, web, uh, web development and general technology matters. So examples of some applications that the candidate might be working with on a sort of daily basis could be, and this is not, um, not limited to things like video streaming services, web-based library guides, um, sort of document collaboration systems, and also things relating to the physical library, such as self-check machines, um, PC booking systems. So the job has a lot of variety. Um, and it's a chance to get exposure to a lot of different uh, systems and 
you're never doing the, the, the same thing on a, a sort of daily sort of basis, really. We're looking for people who can think methodically um, and sort of calmly when it comes to troubleshooting, um, uh, troubleshooting things. But we're especially keen for people who are interested in new and emerging technologies. So we want to, if there's some new things out there, uh, the university library is very good at implementing new technologies and um, having a go to see if something can be done uh, differently. So there's lots of good projects in that space as well. Now, VU is a fantastic university. I mean, every university is saying that they're fantastic. Um, but we have a long tradition of being a university of, of opportunity and inclusiveness. And just recently, the VU um, implemented a block model, which delivered exceptional results for our students and won numerous um, awards and innovation. And we've also um, committed to planetary health. We've got the Australia first um, course for planetary health and over 25 different research projects looking to make a difference globally and locally. And the reason I'm saying this is that um, VU is agile and innovative. Um, it sort of it thinks big, but it's sort of small enough to be sort of quite agile and make things happen. And I found that the library has been a key, um, it's a key partner in, in all these things, whether it's planetary health or VU block model, the library is sort of right involved in a, uh, as an integral part of the university life. So yeah, um, really, I think if you want to work for an environment with a strong moral purpose and uh, interested in all things digital and technical, then uh, this is the job for you. Thank you, Julie. Okay. So that's all we've got time for. Thank you to all of our wonderful speakers who have kept within the time frame. Um, I think it's we've had a wonderful lineup of people, um, and I really hope that this has been a useful session to you all. If you're interested in any of these opportunities that are still open, then I'd encourage you to go to the Alia Jobs page for more information on these jobs and many more. Um, and remember that Library Information Week. Um, runs all week. So be sure to keep an eye out for other events that are happening in your library community. Otherwise, thank you for tuning in and do enjoy the rest of your day. Mm.